My name is Serdar. Um, I'm the product engineer in the IBC team in uh, Interchain GmbH in the, uh, sub, uh, in, in the Interchain Foundation. And today, now I'm going to give the first technical um, workshop of the day. Um, and I will be going into how we can use the Interchain test testing framework in order to test IBC-enabled Cosmosm smart contracts. Now, um, in the IBC team, we use Interchain tests. It, it's a, it's a, it, in, the, in the IBC team, uh, I work on the core IBC Go implementation. So we use Interchain tests in order to test our new features and various aspects of IBC Go. And a lot of other core developers that are working with these um, core parts of the Interchain stack use Interchain tests to test their features. However, it hasn't been very popular in Cosmosm yet. And um, um, although there's, there's people that are using it, for example, Dada has used this to test Polyton. And um, especially when you're using IBC, this becomes a very useful tool. Um, and, um, and I think after this workshop, maybe you can also try to start to use this in your own tests. Um, OK, so. Um, I know there's not going to be a lot of time for you to follow. This is a 30-minute workshop, so there's not going to be a time for you to open the website and follow step by step. But if you want to go through this workshop in your own time, um, there's this website available. And to access here, you just need to go to the Go Code Gen repository. That's going to be in my, um, in my GitHub. So I don't know if you can read anything. But uh, uh, so like this, yeah, OK, it's readable. So. Uh, in, in GitHub, if you go there, you'll be able to go to the repository, and then there's a link to there's a link to the website here. So um, you can always come back here and do the workshop in your own time. Um, okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's start talking about some um, context. Um, and you know, interchain test is very popular, but what is Go Code Gen, right? So uh, one of the reasons why interchain test wasn't very popular in Cosmosm is because uh, the, the main pain point of using Go in, in Cosmosm testing is that you have to continuously maintain the message definitions or the query clients or, or, uh, or various other ways of interacting with, with um, your Cosmosm contract. And as your contract changes, or um, it's, it becomes harder to maintain, and just manually creating these messages is just very painful. So similar to TS code gen, Go code gen allows you to generate these message tabs and query clients um, in Go. Um, so, and the main reason why I initially developed this repository was to actually easy, use, use interchain test more easily because I found it very useful while testing my Cosmosm application that was written in, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Cosmosm application in interchain test. Um, okay, so. After I did this message definitions and query clients, I decided that uh, since we've come so far, I can also add an end-to-end -end test suite generator that automatically generates a test suite for your contract or your application um, in interchain test. And that's what Go code gen is. Uh, although uh, although the, the core of the tests are actually in interchain test, and Go code gen is just a generator for these types and the test suite itself. So, okay, for those of you who are not familiar with Interchain Test, I copied this description basically from their repository, and there's a link to the README there. You can go read about what it is, but it's a framework for testing blockchain functionality and interoperability between chains, uh, mainly within the IBC protocol. So, it can quickly spin up custom testnets and dev environments to test IBC, relayer setup, chain infrastructure, and smart contracts. And um, you can you, you can use uh, Docker to orchestrate these tests and uh, within Go. And Docker itself was written in Go, so the API for this all of this is very very nice. Um, right. So here they listed some pain points of um, currently testing with with um, with uh, with bash based like with other sort of like, tests, right? So here it says shell based testing solutions. That's a pain point. Duplication of effort. That's definitely a pain point. And uh, difficulty in repurposing the existing test harnesses for new problem domains, and that's what interchain test basically um, aims to aims to solve. And you know, why would you like to use this over other scripting solutions? Obviously, other scripting solutions also have their own advantages. Here, I just listed some of the advantages of this framework. Uh, but uh, this is something you have to, of course, decide for your own project which one like makes the most sense. 
Um, I listed Go as a scripting language as a positive because yes, of course, Cosmosm contracts are written in Rust, but then you also need to keep in mind that a lot of um, uh, the core core chains themselves are written in Go. So although you give up that benefit, you gain you gain this benefit. Plus, uh, Go is a very I think uh, convenient scripting language. Although you know it's not gonna be as secure as Rust. Of course, Rust is performant. It's low level. It's amazing. But when you're just scripting a test, you don't need all that security. You don't want to be necessarily fighting with the borrow checker. So for scripting and running this in your CI, it makes sense to use Go. Um, a local testing environment. So the testing framework operates entirely locally. So uh, I'm mirroring a production environment. Uh, so that means the test can be reliably and seamlessly integrated into uh, CI pipelines very easily. And that's also something we'll see. Industry adoption. So as I said, interchain test is widely adopted by leading projects and core teams. Uh, this is supposed to be Cosmos. So this is the first time I'm giving this workshop. There's going to be some errors in the presentation and in the website. So please excuse that. Uh, so including Strangelove, the IBC team, and Dadao has also used it. Um, so and th there are many others, like Composable, uh, and many other teams are using this. So there's definitely adoption. And there's a lot of examples out there where if you don't know how to do something, you'll be able to just copy that code and integrate it. And funding and support. So development of interchain tests is supported by the ICF. Um, so this basically ensures improvements and stability, and it's maintained by Strangelove. OK, so here I, I have the scope, but I think it's just best to go get into the workshop and see, see the scope over there. But OK, the idea is that we are going to have a contract. We are going to compile it and then generate a test suite, and then um, add our contract to that test suite. Uh, this this step is, should be removed because I decided uh, not to do that necessarily. And then we're going to create an um, IBC channel between the contract and the counterparty Go module, and then send an interchain accounts transaction. All right. Okay, so this is for when you are doing this workshop on your own. This is, explains how to set up your work environments, what to use. For Rust, I didn't put a version. Probably 1.75 and above should be good. Just just that's because what Cosmosm optimizer uses. So that's just what I'm. What I what I think should be nice, and it's also just as recommended. Just as a make alternative written in Rust, I think it's very convenient and it's gaining popularity in a lot of Rust repos, right? So okay. So um, now we can actually start to the start getting into the technical side of the workshop. So there's a workshop repository, um, and then we just basically you just clone that to your own machine. I've already done that here. Um, and then you check out the tutorial branch. So let's do that. By the way, if it's unreadable, maybe I can zoom in more. Okay. Um, right. So okay, it might be good to actually just take a look at what's in this repository, right? Um, before we actually get into this. So this is just an example example contract that's in this repository, and it's basically um, this this contract. I don't want to get too much into what the contract is because I, here I'm just going to be showing off the test suite. But it's it's important to have like a small understanding of what we are doing here. So I'll just open the original repository of the contract before I separated it into this repo, which is the Cosmosm Interchain Accounts Controller. It's basically a contract that uh, controls interchain accounts on other chains, uh, but it's purely written in Cosmosm. So it doesn't use any Go API to connect to the interchain account host. It's a implementation of ICS 27 purely in Cosmosm. So that means if the counterparty chain doesn't even have Cosmosm, you can still create and control interchain account there. And if the Cosmosm chain doesn't even have interchain accounts, you can still create and control interchain accounts. So this is entirely interchain accounts implementation on its own. And that's able to interoperate with the Go implementation. Um, and then here, there's also in the testing uh, in the testing directory, there's also some other testing related contracts that are sort of that are used in testing, but those are not like real contracts, basically. Um, yeah, and and that's this repo. And then I removed the end-to-end -end testing directory because the whole point is that we are going to generate the end-to-end -end testing directory here. Um, okay. So that's that's what the repo contains. OK, now we can just build these contracts and then, um, and then go from there. So, so let's, this is just to make sure that once you clone the repo, everything just works, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we won't burn all the, 
all the 30 minutes compiling wasm. <laughs> Could happen, but yeah, hopefully not. Um, OK, while that's running, um, we can see if there's anything else I should talk about here. Yeah, not really. OK, so let's just have this run. Okay. So yeah, the, the just command just just runs the optimizer Cosmos optimizer Docker image on it, so it doesn't do anything anything fancy. Um, I just want to make sure everything is good. Yeah. Let's take a long time. OK, so that's fine. And the, the second one, I'm not going to wait the whole way. I'm just going to start talking about, um, yeah, OK. So while this is compiling two contracts, so it's going to take a little bit longer, I'm going to talk about Go CodeGen a little bit, which is what we have here. Um, OK, so it, now we're actually going to use, I just want to show that how to use Go CodeGen, how to generate messages, and etc. So we need to generate shamas first. So this is how we use TS CodeGen as well. So let's just do that. Uh, just generate shamas, right? OK, so we're just going to generate. OK, all the shamas are generated for all the three contracts. So now let's just show you how to sort of use Go code gen. So Go code gen, um, generate. So you can also, you know, to get help, you can go to the repository. Um, but you can also just use the help command, right? So generate messages. And then I want to give it the shema. And then the shema is going to be, let's say, CWSA controllers um, API definition. And and then you know you can define where you want the output directory to be, what you want the Go package name to be. I'm just going to use the default settings and just run this command. And if we if we just look at if you just look at this, we have a new file called messages.go. So it only generated one file because I was just generating the message definitions. And if you go into this, um, obviously there's a lint error because there's no Go package here. I just throw this file here, but you can see that instantiate messages defined, execute messages defined, because Go doesn't have um, enum type, right? So these are all pointers, and when you want to set up the create channel, you you just you just don't populate these messages. You just leave them empty, and then um, and and yeah, this is um, this basically defines all the message definitions for for the contract. Um, so let's just remove this because we are not actually going to use that right now. Um, and and yeah, you can also generate other things here. So if you go to if you go here, uh, generate help. You can see that you can also generate a query client. And then if you go back all the way to here, we have some interchain test related commands, which generate the test suite. OK, so we just explored Go code gen a little bit. Now, if we go back to our compilation, all the two contracts have been compiled. So let's, let's move on. OK, so now we can actually start scaffolding a test suite. So the way this works is you scaffold your test suite first, and then you um, add your contracts to it uh, as you move. So let's let's just actually just scaffold it. Go code gen scaffold. Of course, you can also write your own interchain own test suite based on interchain test, or you can customize the one that's generated here. This is just supposed to be a starting point for you to sort of customize it as you go. Uh, interchain test scaffold. So when you do this, you get an interactive prompt. That says, what do you want the Go module name to be? It doesn't really matter, because it's just going to be used like locally. You're not going to publish it to a package repository. And then the output directory, I'm just going to use the default as well, which is end-to-end -end slash interchain test v8, because it's using the version 8. And then number of chains to scaffold. For now, I just supported like one, two, or three chains. But technically, it supports like any number of chains, although like I don't see the point for more than three chains Like if you're, if you're testing. So I just wanted to keep it simple and just support these. In the future, right now, we only generate one type of chain, which is going to be a basic WASMD uh, Docker image. But I also have other examples where like, we are using uh, Osmosis Docker image, and we are also using um, uh, regular uh, SIMD image. So there, you can see the examples at the end of the file. You can see like links to how to, how to set those up. In the future, this prompt menu should also ask you what type of chain you want. But in this current iteration, we just ch choose a number of chains. And then would you like to generate GitHub Actions? 
and um, and we would, I, I guess, because we also like to run our test to be, we like our test to be in the CI. So okay, so now the entire test suite is generated. So if we just go back to, go back to here, we can see that a uh, new GitHub file is generated. GitHub uh, workflow file is generated. We'll get into this later, not right now, but let's look into end-to-end -end test suite. So there's a lot of files here. Um, so here uh, we can just very quickly go over these and then um, and then see the test running. Um, so you know there's 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 the um, there's a test suite directory which is uh, that, sorry there's a test values directory which defines some constants that are used in the setting up of the suite. So that's what this package is doing. Um, chain config directory defines the chains that uh, that we are actually using. So here you can see that there are two chains defined here, and they are both WasmD chains. Um, you can see that the Docker image here is WasmD. So when you want to change the Docker image, you replace it with maybe an Osmosis image, uh, or maybe you can change the version. And one of the exercises is to okay, maybe bump, if you want to test Cosm Wasm v2, you can already do this. So if you just bump this to 51, everything just works. So this is already it's already able to test Cosm Wasm version two. Um, if you if you are gonna work on something related to that during the hackathon and you want to make sure your um, contract works, this might be a good way to go. Um, okay, um, but uh, and and as I said, there are other examples here for other chains. So you can see that here I have an example for Osmosis and I have an example for just a basic no no Cosm Wasm chain. So this is a no Cosm Wasm chain. You can see that the uh, you can see that the Docker image is like a basic IBC Go simap. And here you can see that there is one that's uh, an osmosis image. Um, so these are already these are already sort of supported configs, but they're not auto-generated for you at, at the moment. Um, okay, and then there's the end-to-end -end suite itself. So um, maybe be, the suite can be a little bit complicated. So maybe it's better to just look at the test first and then come back to come back to the end-to-end -end suite. Uh, the, I think the other ones were simple enough to talk about directly. Okay. So this is, it also generates a very basic test um, that doesn't have any contracts because we haven't actually added any contracts yet. But basically what this basic test does is, um, the test is defined here, so it's called test basic. And the setup suite just calls up the, calls the underlying, uh, underlying um, setup suite of the actual test suite. But um, so what we are doing is we first create a transfer channel, so we Go suite that relayer that create channel and then we use the default channel options. The default channel options are just the port. It's just an unordered transfer channel, so we just use the default with default channel options and then say that th there are no errors and then wait for five blocks for the channel handshake to complete. So you can see what's happening here. It says wait for five blocks and then uh, wait wait for blocks five blocks and then um, for both of these chains. So if I didn't have chain B here it will only wait for five blocks on chain A, and it wouldn't wait for chain B. Um, OK. So we first just create the transfer channel. Second, we have another subtest for verifying that transfer channel. So this is just a bunch of assertions that the transfer channel is what we want. So here, what I'm doing is I'm getting the relayer. I'm saying I'm calling a query, get channels, and then uh, get all the channels of the, the chain with this chain ID. So again, this is the chain wasmd that we defined here. So it's just a rename for chain A and chain B. I named them wasmd1, wasmd2. And you just you just get the you just get the channels. And then you say that you assert that there's only one channel because we only created one. Um, and then you just take that first channel and then just verify that verify its port ID is transfer port ID, which as you can see it's transfer. We verify that the counterparty port ID is also transfer. So it's just a bunch of assertions. Like the, it's unordered. The channel is in the open state. So these are just a bunch of assertions. Just making sure, making sure the channel is open. And I recommend this type of testing, like where you, you go through and basically check every field of, um, f of everything. Because once you create a test suite this way, um, whenever I like joined hackathons and like tested my contract this way, like when I actually deployed on mainnet, I never had any issues. Um, uh, so I think the the end to end environment is very realistic. Okay, and then and then now that we created a channel, I want to transfer some tokens and test that behavior, right? So now I'm using a helper uh, broadcast messages. So this is on the suite. So suite that broadcast message broadcast on this chain with this user. So I'm giving it a user. Uh, I'm using user A. I'm saying I'm going to use two hundred thousand gas. And you know if you're if you're 
if you don't know what, like you can just go to definition or just see what what um, uh, just see the Go docs to understand what 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 these variables are, and then the actual message I'm sending. The message is message transfer, and this is this is this is defined uh, in the actual IBC Go, right? So the nice thing about using Go is you are not relying on external crates. You are really using the actual definitions that the blockchains themselves are using. So this message transfer is imported from IBC Go directly. Um, so um, so so that that's that. So you don't have to deal with okay, do I know the right proto? Do, do I not? Like this is this 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 should work out of the box. And yeah, I have like three different like you know proto packages. That that, that that's gonna be a problem. Um, okay. And yeah, this is just I'm just saying I'm gonna transfer hundred thousand tokens and then time out in ten minutes in case um, require that there is no error, and then wait for five blocks. Again, this is a packet, so there's gonna be a there's gonna be a like a packet lifecycle that takes a couple blocks. So just to make sure, I wait five blocks, and after that, I verify that the tokens have been transferred. So this is just gonna be um, I'm gonna query my balance uh, on the on the on the new chain on the second chain, Wasm D2, and assert that the balance is hundred thousand. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, that's it basically. Um, and now we can see this test run already. So if you just if you just go for this, um, it should just run. So um, yeah, just just go into the testing directory and go go test. Um, go test dash v run and then okay. The way you you run the test is okay. I can just copy the command here as well, but I, I can also do this, which is uh, when you're using this this kind of uh, sweet struct. So you sort of say. You just sort of take this function's name. Uh, yeah, th this is already in the CI, so you can already copy the command from the CI. But so you first put the test test suite test suite function's name, and then you put the test name, which is test basic in this case. So test basic. So that should be good enough, I think. Yes. So for everything was auto generated, so I didn't add any any anything in it yet. Yeah. Uh, so okay, so now we can see the we can see the test running, and you know you can always go scroll up and see what's what it's actually doing step by step. It's initiating a chain. So the way this works is, um, it's you know it it creates a lot of Docker images, so relayers in its own Docker image, the chains are in their own Docker image. The, I mean the validators are in their own Docker image. So. Uh, it's init initiating the chain and then uh, gonna gonna run gonna run our gonna start running our uh, orchestration later because um, a lot of the stuff that's happening right now is actually so while so while this is running it's gonna take it's gonna take a bit um, so while that's running we can go to um, the setup suite now we can go back to it yeah so this is the actual underlying test suite all the commands you see are running are actually the uh, underlying like setting up the relayer setting up the chains but Usually you don't need to worry about this, and if you are really really interested, you can go and read. You can go and read how how these are instantiated. Um, the the test suite itself is just a wrap. Uh, is just a basically a collection of chains, collection of users, um, uh, a relayer, and and basically a, um, a path name from chain A to chain B, and that's useful for the relayer. But it doesn't really matter that much uh, what the chain, what the path name is really. Okay. So let's go back to the tests. Okay, it's still running. So now it's querying the channels of Wasm D2. Right. So okay, so now it's in the, on the test part where it's doing the transfer token. So now it's um it's here. It's already here. Yeah. Okay, it's it's finished, and you can see all the all the assertions passed, and the test test passed. Okay, so uh, I think that's basically it for for the first for the first part. And GitHub Actions also already works. So if we just if we just um, if we just go back, uh, git status, git add, uh, git commit, part one, let's say, and then just we can push. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, I need to set up set up over there. Okay. Uh, 
maybe maybe I don't want to waste some time doing this, but we can show you this part. It would just work. Okay. But then I have to create a yeah pull request to show the things running. But all right, let's do this. Okay, let's do the let's create the pull request then. Don't merge. Okay. So we should see the CI running, I think, already. Um, yeah, we can see the CI is running. And and that now the, the same thing that happened in my computer is just going to happen on GitHub and things should just pass. Okay. Uh, we can look at that later, uh, whether it passed or, or not. Now, okay, finally we can get into adding a contract and testing that. So let's do that. So adding a contract, so here I give an overview of the contract. Um, I did that already a little bit while we were talking. I'm not going to go into this, uh, what, how it exactly works. Um, this, is, uh, this is more for like when we want to go more in detail about how the tests actually work. I'm just going to start adding the, uh, adding the contract and, and go from there. So, so OK, let's do that. Let's do that here. So yeah, so we should do go code gen. Um, interchain test, and now we're going to add contract, and then we're going to give it schema. So again, we are going to use the schema that I was showing earlier, which is CWS here controller. In this case, I'm going to start adding this contract, and for and then I need to show uh, I need to define where is the suite itself. So I'm going to say suite directory is going to be inside end-to-end -end interchain test. That's where my test suite is. I run this, and everything is auto should be auto generated now. So if we go back, if we go back. We can see that, um, yeah, we can see that inside types, there is now a CWSA controller package, which defines messages, which defines a query client, and the contract helper methods. Um, this, this includes the instantiate function, and um, yeah, this includes the instantiate function and the contract definition. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how this works inside contract test better, I think. Now, it also generates a contract test automatically, but this test, if you were to run it, would just fail because um, because it doesn't really do much. All it does is it's, it tells you how to store a contract. Um, so basically, in, in WasmD1, we are going to run the store contract function, and then we are going to tell what user should be storing it, so it's user A, and then path your WASM file, and then this gas amount is actually not needed. So I should remove that from the auto-generated code in, in the future. So that's, that's the issue I already have. Um, but yeah, that gas amount was actually too low. Um, that's re that's the reason you should remove it. But you can also increase it if you if you if you want. Okay. Um, so uh, and then you get the code ID as a result. Assert that there are no errors, and then you can then run the instantiate helper, which is uh, gonna like you tell it the code ID, you tell it the um, you tell it the chain. If there is admin, if you leave it empty, that means no admin. If you have an address there, that means that's the admin of the contract. Uh, and then the instantiate message. Here, instantiate message is initiated empty, but now you can start populating it with actual parameters that you need to instantiate it. So that's that's because it's auto-generated that it's empty. And you can see that in this case, we take three arguments, an owner, a, a contract to send callbacks to, and then channel open init options. Um, and that's because this contract only instantiates its own channel. So it doesn't let relayers create channels. It only allows itself to create channels, but relayers can complete the channel handshake, but cannot instantiate. And that's like a security feature of the contract. So, so that, that's why this, this is there. OK. So, so that's how you add a contract. Um, let's add the, add the second contract, which is the callback counter. Um, yeah, OK. Let's, let's add the callback counter quickly. Um, you're right. OK, and now we added a second contract. Now, this is not going to actually change the contract test anymore. It's just going to add the message definitions because the file already exists, so it's not going to create a new file. Um, and now, now, now that's it, basically. Now we've added two contracts to the test suite inside types. Um, now we can actually look into, oh, and OK, if you want this test to run in GitHub Actions, here I describe how to how to do that. So you need to add your test to the list of tests. So that's test with contract test suite, and then test contract. That's the function's name. And then uh, you need to um, because because we are targeting a, like a directory for Wasm, you need to build the contract in that directory, which is just just install just 
and then run just build test contracts and just build optimize. So those are the commands I run initially. So you instruct the CI to do that. Um, and that, that's, that's all the diffs you need in order to achieve this. And if you want to see these completed files, you can just go to view source and you can see the actual diff in GitHub, everything running as well. I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do this since like we are running out of time, although yes, I did start a little bit late. Um, so we can maybe come back to this if we have a time at the end and see everything running. Okay, custom tests. So far everything was auto-generated and we didn't write any tests on our own. Um, so the, the way I plan this part is we're just gonna copy this test and then go over what's happening in the test rather than like building a test ourselves right now. So I'm just gonna copy this code and actually delete everything that's here. Uh, copy, and I paste everything here. Yeah, and then save. So now you're gonna get a linter warning because I've used some packages that have external dependencies. So sorry, sorry, that have like indirect dependencies. So what you need to do is you're gonna you're gonna go here and you're gonna, um, yeah, you're gonna just say go mod tidy. So you're just gonna refresh the dependencies, and that should do it. Uh, if you just. Um, Did I not save what I did? Oh yeah, okay. Um, what was contract test? Yeah, okay, no more errors. Uh, so I just relaunched my editor. Um, okay, so now let's just see what happens in the test. And if we were to run this test, it would pass. Um, and you can see the completed version. Oh, also this test just passed. But if you can see the completed version here, um, inside the actual, from the completed, uh, there's a branch called completed. You can see that um, after we add the custom test, that's the state we are in right now, the whole, uh, both of the tests passes now. And these tests run in parallel, so not back to back. Obviously, we want them to run in parallel because otherwise uh, things are not efficient. So if you want tests to run in parallel, that's going to be a separate function. Um, and if you want the tests to run back to back, then you write them inside the same, same function. OK. Um, so it's the same it's the same thing and then we first start with upload and instantiate contracts. So what we are doing is in WasmD1 we first store the contract. This is where you would find the callback counter contract, uh, contract WASM. You get the code ID and then you instantiate the callback counter. No admin. Uh, instantiate message is actually empty for this because this instantiate message is actually an empty struct. So we can actually feed an empty struct to it. So assert that there is no error, assert that the contract address is not empty, so I just make sure that make sure that everything is done. And then second, store the code ID of um, ICA controller, require that there is no error, and then I'm gonna instantiate, I'm gonna instantiate the CW ICA controller. Again, no admin, use the code ID that you just received from here. Um, instantiate on WASMD1, not WASMD2. Instantiate message, here are the actual options. Owner is nil because that's going to automatically set the sender to be the owner if it's, uh, if it's nil. Now, the reason why I set it to be nil is because the way Go code gen works is option types are auto-generated as pointers. Uh, and that's a common thing a lot of Go developers do when they're writing these types. So because there's no enums, there's no option type, this is how we handle this in, in Go. Um, and, and you get used to it. Uh, and if it wasn't here, that would be the same thing. So that would still be as nil, but I want to show it explicitly. And then send callbacks to the callback contracts address and um, channel open init options. So use the first connection, so connection zero, connection zero, and then the channel is an ordered channel. Okay. And then I'm using 500,000 gas to instantiate. Um, and then all these contracts I'm saving to, I'm saving as an external variable to this subtest. So in interchain tests, I like to write my tests in subtests so that uh, everything is more readable. Um, so that's why I have this external variable where I set them to this variable and then I can reuse this variable in other subtests to come. The next one is now I want to verify the open handshake. You might say, okay, where is the handshake started? It's actually the instantiation function starts itself. It sends a stargate message that starts the channel handshake. So, um, so it actually works. Let me see the time. Okay, we are, we are running out of it, but I'll just finish going over it. Verify open channel handshake is a bunch of assertions again, right? So this is this shows a good thing where how do you query a contract in using the query client? So what you do is contract that query client, and then there's a list of every query that's in the contract. So 
um, get query contract state would be um, it, it would take this query message, which is the which is the element of the query message enum, right? So it would take this type of query message, and then the ownership query would take this type of query message, and then get channel would take this type of, and then the return types are also there. And this is using gRPC. So you could also use this outside of uh, interchain test. That's what the idea of generating the code independently is. You could use it to interact with actual blockchains or using actual clients. Um, and then I just do a bunch of assertions. Assert the state is open, it's ordered, it's like a bunch of assertions. And finally, I retrieve the interchain account address from the contract. And then the, way, the thing I test here is a delegation message. So what I do is I delegate uh, using this interchain account. I first fund that interchain account. And again, that's a utility helper. I'm funding it on WASMD. So this basically just sends um, like a uh, I think 10 million tokens or something, uh, to or 10 billion tokens or something to the IC address, um, and then, and then I basically uh, construct a construct a Cosmos message. That's delegation, um, and these these types were all auto generated in Go code gen, right? So because those were defined inside CWICA controller, the Cosmos message for empty. So that's a, that will be a generic type, right? Um, Bank, custom, staking, and if you go into these, these all have all their own definitions. Okay, when you actually want to understand how this works, you can come and read it on your own. But the idea is that I painstakingly construct a delegation message, and then, and then, uh, and then wrap that inside the execute message. Finally, so CWS controller execute message. I'm choosing the send Cosmos message enum element. I'm giving it, I'm giving it uh, this stake Cosmos message that we just defined above. And then the set of messages is a is a vector of uh, Cosmos messages, which is in this case only stake message. But you could add more messages and take other actions with this ICA. And then I call contract that execute and I feed it the execute message. Uh, I assert that there's no error. Wait for five blocks for the packet lifecycle to complete. And then finally I get my balance. I assert that my initial balance minus the stake amount is my final balance, which makes sense. But then I also query the chain. I query the delegation response of the chain. So this is not a contract query, it's a chain query. I query the chain to see how much delegation my ICA has, um, assert that there are no errors in the query, and then assert that the stake amount is exactly the delegation response amount. So this is as assert equal, stake amount is equal to Delegation response dot balance dot amount, um, and then that's it. And then I verify that the callback contract was called. Uh, that doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I think we are on time now. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's all that we need to talk about. Of course, if you want to go in more detail, like why I did certain things, why the tests were like written this way, there's a lot of descriptions on this web page, like why I using why am I using s dot run, like how does that help. Or um, you know, how would you actually store instantiated contracts? And there are links to uh, like more full-fledged suites. Like this suite was more of like a hack to just be able to describe everything that was going on faster. But there's also suites that are more customized as well. And there are some examples you can see. Um, and yeah, uh, I think I think that's about it. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for. Uh, Thank you for being here and uh, yeah, I hope you found it helpful and it helps you during your, during the hackathon.